Hi there, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, August 16th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in as always, we appreciate it. And as always, if you're new to the channel or even if you're existing, please do like, subscribe, share, and hit that uh, customized smash button for personalized updates so that you'll always receive the latest podcasts as well as these weekly updates. As always, we have much to cover, so let's dive right in. So this week we had some great shows. We had Dave Champion do the nature of the medical side of things and health that we discussed. That video is going to be exclusively on Rumble so as to avoid any strikes or issues with our concerning our YouTube channel. So please do know that up front that will be exclusively on Rumble. Very good show. We recommend humbly that you watch. It's discussing body fitness and other related uh, hacks to help you with your metabolism and overall diet, which has been a question some of you have asked in the past. We had the wonderful prophet, brand new guest, Carolyn Dennis. She great, gave some great godly prophetic insights into the well transfer specifics, Nasara, and many other things, precious metals, etc. So if you haven't seen that show, we recommend that as well. Of course, brother from uh, Miles Franklin, one of our premier sponsors, Andy Sheckman, uh, joined us to discuss all the latest financial updates and his uh, internal analytics. And of course, good man, Eli Weber, to discuss a lot of the changes in his life and observations that he astutely has picked up throughout the society. Uh, this is the coming week. We have a unique guest. We have, instead of Ian Farrar, our usual brother from Perium, we have the chief head honcho, Dave Sandoval, CEO, who's going to be joining us on the podcast, and he will be in my local area, so I'll get to meet him personally, which I'm very much looking forward to. Really, really cool guy. I had a chance to talk with him briefly this week, and he's got a treasure trove of experience, so he'll be hearing from the horse's mouth. And of course, good mate, David Mahoney, for our monthly update. <clears throat> now, let's get to the headline news. According to Bloomberg, General Motors Company said Marissa West has decided to leave the automaker just eight months after taking the job overseeing North American operations, its most profitable business. The 20-year company veteran was promoted to the president of GM North America last fall. At the time, West was 42 and seen as an up-and-coming chief executive officer to replace Mary Bear's organization. The Not Worldwide has slashed about 4% of its global workforce this week as part of an internal restructuring as the wedding planning giant The Post has learned. Approximately 100 employees were laid off across the Not sales and marketing teams, according to sources familiar with the matter. The company began informing impacted workers as of this Tuesday. Networking Goliath Cisco will reportedly slash thousands of jobs as it focuses on growing its cybersecurity business, as well as capitalizing on AI demand. According to a Reuters report <clears throat> citing the unknown persons familiar with the matter, quote unquote, the second round of layoffs is expected to be similar in scope or potentially slightly larger than the last round in February when about 4,000 employees were laid off. As of July 2023, Cisco employed 84,900 workers. 600 jobs were axed at John Deere's factory as issues continue to mount while reasons like higher production costs are given, other sources blame greed and the infamous DEI woke agenda for the mass layoffs. Jeep maker Stellantis, one of the big three automakers, is set to lay off approximately 2,450 workers later this year at a discontinued Ram 1500 factory outside of Detroit. Specialty flooring retailer LL Flooring said on Sunday, it has commenced Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings and will pursue an ongoing concern of the sale of its business. LL Flooring has also said it is looking to close 94 of its locations. LL Flooring is one of the leading U.S. retailers of hardwood surface flooring with over 300 stores across the country. Blink Fitness, which is owned by luxury gym chain Equinox, has filed for Chapter 11 on Monday in the District of Delaware, as reported by Bloomberg. The company, which operates 101 gyms nationally, seek to be allowed to continue operating as long as they work out a plan to repay creditors. The floor room shops closed and 200 jobs lost after carpet right collapse. Last week, the bankrupt digital asset lender Celsius sued Tether, the issuer of the world's largest stablecoin, in order to claw back approximately $2.4 billion from the crypto firm, in what Tether describes as a, quote, venal, meritless shakedown. <clears throat> Some Google users on Monday said they were unable to conduct searches utilizing the company's Chrome browser and experienced trouble sending emails throughout the Gmail app. This problem was only isolated to affected users in the UK, and apparently, according to a Google representative, it has been resolved. 
the pandemic played a major role in the demise of historic paint retailer Kelly Moore Paints, which in January 2024 shut down all 157 of its retail locations, <clears throat> excuse me, and furloughed about 700 employees in an out of court wind down of all of its business operations. ExxonMobil is laying off 59 employees, including 10 within the Permian Basin and 39 in Dallas, according to a, a firm filing with the Texas Workforce Commission. The layoffs included workers from Pioneer Natural Resources, formerly headquartered in Las Colinas, according to the filing. Walgreens announced its closure of nearly 700 branches nationwide. Inflation costs forced the company to shut her down underperforming locations. This move will effectuate thousands of employees and millions of customers. <clears throat> Subway has called an emergency meeting with the franchisees that run 19,000 restaurants amid tumbling sales and profits. The sandwich chain with more locations in McDonald's, but not with much lower sales, will reveal its plans to lure in more customers, such as deals and new product offerings. 1,300 employees laid off as Tyson plan in Iowa forces 25% of the town's workforce to uh, be unemployed. 13 retailers are set to go bankrupt and shutter their doors in 2024. They are as follows. Lowe's, Petco, Big Lots, JCPenney, Express, Neiman Marcus, Rite Aid, Stitch Fix, Foot Locker, Steinmart, Joanne, The Container Store, and Fossil. U.S. colleges are closing at an alarming rate. A list of public and private school closures. This year alone, 22 schools have announced mergers or closures. And according to Best Colleges, it is already tracking four that will take place in 2025. The 23 figure track so far this year is greater than all the closures included on the college list focused Web Outlets 2023 list. And they are as follows Salis University in Pennsylvania, merging with Drexel University, Lincoln Christian University, Illinois, merging with Ozark Christian College. Pittsburgh Technical College in Pennsylvania, Goddard College in Vermont, Woodbury University, California, merging with University of Redlands, University of the Arts, Pennsylvania, Union Institute in University, Ohio, Johnson University, Florida, Delaware College of Art and Design, Delaware, Cabrini University, Pennsylvania, Wells College in New York, the College of St. Rose in New York, Notre Dame College of Ohio, Magdalen College in New Hampshire, <clears throat> Birmingham Southern College in Alabama, University of St. Catherine in California, Oak Point University in Illinois, Hodges University in Florida, Mountain State College in West Virginia, St. John's University, Staten Island, New York, merging with Lewis University, Indiana University, Purdue University in Indianapolis, Indiana separating in two different institutions, and finally, Pennsylvania College of Health and Sciences, merging with St. Joseph's University. Inflation is hitting virtually every aspect and sector of life. The Cobisi letter next illustrates this point quite well with the following industries being hit the hardest, and they are as follows. Car insurance inflation, 18.6%. Transportation, 8.8%. Hospital services, 6.1%. Homeowner inflation, 5.3%. Rent, 5.1%, electricity, 4.9%, car repair inflation, 4.6%, food away from home, 4.1%. And since January 2020, the US dollar has lost over 25% of its purchasing power with prices still continuing to rise. Avon products filed for chapter 11 on Monday as the beauty brand looks to address its debt and legal liability stemming from lawsuits that alleged its talc-based products were contaminated with cancer causing substances. The holding company hasn't sold Avon products in the U.S. since it divested its North American businesses in 2016, but remains the holding company for the Avon brand's operating entities outside of the U.S. <clears throat> John Lewis is set to cut 153 jobs as part of a shakeup of its store's team's design to improve overall customer service and give more face time to their respective customers. A New York State Supreme Court judge set a November 8th auction date for properties owned by Charles Cohen, Cohen Realty Enterprises, including the U.S. Landmark and U.S. Curzon Art House Cinema chains he acquired throughout 2018 and 2019. Exxon Mobil Corporation, XOM, the U.S. energy giant, has begun a workforce reshuffle leading to layoff notices for 59 employees per Reuters report. 
This move is part of Exelon's broader workforce restructuring plan following 60 billion acquisition of Pioneer Natural Resources. Sonos is also in the process of winding down some of its customer support offices, including one in Amsterdam that will later close this year. Paramount TV is shutting down, laying off thousands in this industry global upheaval, according to Breitbart. Paramount TV Studios is shutting down amid layoffs and restructuring at Paramount Global. The layoffs began with 15% of the global workforce and eliminating redundant roles in order to find 500 million in annual cost savings. USPS has lost over $150 million in package delivery volume in 2024, citing people seeking out less expensive shipping options. That's a 50% drop in revenue in one year. A foreign cyber attack hits a major US city as local police claim bank accounts have been hacked, this according to the Daily Huddle. In San Francisco, a Denny's restaurant believed to be the city's last remaining franchise's location is shut down. According to a report from SF Gate, the restaurant was plagued with alleged dine and dashers and vandalism. On top of that, the tremendous cost of running a business in San Francisco overall contributed to the diner's downfall, the franchise owner Chris Haig told SF Gate. Northrop Grumman could cut as many as 550 jobs at its Redondo Beach and Manhattan Beach locations in California aerospace as facilities are laying off several hundred employees earlier this year. The Falls Church, Virginia-based government contractor announced the second round of cuts this week to its space business without specifying which specific programs will be targeted. In February, it told employees that it could eliminate about 1,000 jobs in the two South Bay cities, as well as Azusa. <clears throat> Lycos Therapeutics will be laying off 75% of its workforce, and its founder, Rick Doblin, will be leaving the board, the company said on Thursday, days after the US FDA declined approval for its MDMA-based treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. Redbox, a once dominant force in DVD rentals, has filed for bankruptcy last month, leaving customers the questions about the movies they have purchased throughout their service with, Red, um, with Redbox, excuse me. Now on to the latest for precious metals and Brent crude. Gold, as of today, hit an all-time high at the time of this broadcast, $2,525.70. You know, remember, Prophet Carolyn Dennis, who's watched the show, said the Lord showed her that gold and silver were going to move up exponentially. And days after the broadcast, they are beginning to do so and will continue. Silver is at $28.35, inching its way up to the $30 mark. Brent crude oil holding at $79.78. <clears throat> now to the notable deaths and resignations. Football Association of Wells President Steve Williams has resigned with immediate effect. He was suspended in July pending an investigation and now decided to step down before an independent hearing takes place. Welsh's football governing body did not disclose the reason for his suspension. Rod Stewart has canceled his 200th and final 2024 show of his Las Vegas residency due to an illness. He says, quote, I am desperately sorry to miss the 200th show celebration. Most people can work with a strep throat, but obviously not me. I'm absolutely gutted. I've been looking forward to this concert for a long time. End quote. Cartoon Network has been scrubbed from the web. Warner Brothers Discovery has pulled the entire contents of CartoonNetwork.com offline, thereby redirecting visitors to a landing page on Max, its subscription-based streaming service, encouraging fans to sign up to watch their favorite Cartoon Network shows. The shuttering of the site appears to have happened on Thursday, August 8th. Three deans at Columbia University who sent text messages that their school president described as, quote, anti-Semitic, have resigned from their respective posts. The deans resigned after a series of troubling texts came to light that were sent in May during a campus event called Jewish Life on Campus, Past, Present, and Future. The texts were exchanged while Jewish campus leaders shared their concerns about anti-Semitism at the New York School. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has announced he will not seek re-election as the leader of the ruling Liberal Democrat Party in next month's party polls and a decision that means the country will have a new prime minister. His resignation is tendered to take effect early September. Speaking at the news conference in Tokyo on Wednesday, Kishida said it was time for a new face at the helm of the party and he would fully support their leadership. Edmund de Rothschild quietly removes pri private banking CEO. Hervé Ordioni has stepped down after two years in the role and almost two decades at the family-owned firm. Porter Stansberry is stepping down as CEO of financial research company MarketWise on NASDAQ, 
which he helped to found due to a dispute over an acquisition of his boutique advisory firm. A top aide to the Duke of Sussex has left his role after just three months after mutually agreeing he was not the proper fit. <clears throat> Josh Kettler took up the post in chief of staff in May before the Sussex tour to Nigeria. His departure comes as Harry and Meghan prepare for a working trip to Columbia this week. The EW Scripps company is eliminating its chief operating officer role, a move that will seek the departure of current COO Lisa Knutson, the desk has confirmed. Knutson will remain at Scripps throughout the end of the year as part of a transitional phase. Scripps CEO Adam Simpson said in a note sent to the employees Monday afternoon, a town hall with the employees will be held on August 15th, during which Simpson will further address organizational changes and structure within the company. Kevin Sullivan, a well-known wrestling personality known for playing the role of villain and being the World Wrestling Championship's key booker has passed away at the age of 74. This news came via Pro Wrestling Insider on Friday after an emergency operation left him unwell. Juan Chichi Rodriguez, a Hall of Fame golfer whose antics on the greens and inspiring life story made him among the sport's most popular players during a long professional career died on Thursday. He was 88. Rodriguez's death was announced by Carmelo Javier Rios, a senator in Rodriguez's native Puerto Rico. The cause of death was not disclosed. The Broadway community is mourning one of its own. The prolific producer Adam Epstein died on Tuesday at age 49, according to The Hollywood Reporter, after a short battle with brain cancer. Zambia's former First Lady Maureen Manawasa has died at the age of 61. She succumbed late Tuesday afternoon after a short illness at a hospital in the capital Lusaka, her family said. The former first lady was married to the country's third president, Levi Manawasa, who served from 2002 until his death in 2008. On Saturday night, August 10th, Tamara Murphy, the 63-year-old owner of celebrated Capitol Hill restaurant Terra Plata, died after suffering a stroke. Murphy was one of the leading lights of a generation of chefs that defined the Pacific Northwest cuisine and naturally sourced foods long before it was ever in fashion. The New York Times recently named Terra Plata one of the top 25 restaurants in Seattle. Grace Bentkowski, a creative producer with the cable news outlet News Nation, has died at only 22 last month after an accident at a Chicago train station was reported this week. In a statement released Wednesday, News Nation mourned Bentkowski as a, quote, rising star at the network. Belfast-born businessman Paul McGlade has been described as one of Ireland's finest and most fearless entrepreneurs following his death at the age of 69. Mr. McGlade, who founded the former champion sports chain, along with many other successful ventures in Dublin, died last Thursday following a short illness. <clears throat> Bolton Wanderer's great Roy Greaves has died at the age of 77. The midfielder was part of Wanderer's great 1970s team under namesake Ian Greaves and made more appearances than any other outfield player in the club's history. Althea Alexander, who built a diverse pipeline of medical students at USC, dies at the age of 89. She died on July 17th after suffering a brain hemorrhage, according to her daughter, Kim Alexander Brettler. John McBride, West Virginia's first astronaut, passes away at the age of 80. Welcome to Wrexham Star dies at age 100. Wrexham AFC has paid tribute to its oldest fan after he died at the age of 100. Black Panther actress Connie Chiomi has died she was 72. Chumi died at the Garden City Hospital in Johannesburg, South Africa on Tuesday, August 6, following a brief period of illness, her family said in a statement posted on her Instagram page. Wally Amos, the founder of the celebrated cookie brand Famous Amos, has passed away at the age of 88. According to Amos's children, Sean and Sarah Amos, the cookie tycoon, died at his home in Honolulu, Hawaii, Tuesday after struggling with dementia-related complications. Tributes have been pouring in following the sudden death of former Irish professional rugby player Rory Burke, who was just 30 years old. Burke, who played at the underage level with Ireland and represented both Connacht and Munster at a senior level, passed away unexpectedly Friday, August 9th, as reported on RIPIE. Susan Wojcicki, the former YouTube CEO who helped bring NFL Sunday ticket to the channel, died at age 56 last Friday. Her husband, Dennis Tropper, announced at the news network via Facebook, she had been battling lung cancer for nearly two years. 
Angel Salazar, an actor and comedian known for his roles in movies such as Scarface and Kalito's Way, has died. He was 68. Charles R. Cross, the Seattle music journalist and best-selling author behind Heavier Than Heaven, a biography of Kurt Cobain and Roomful of Mirrors, a biography on Jimi Hendrix, has died. He was 67. Rachel Lillis, a voice actor who starred in many Pokemon films and series as the characters Misty, Jesse, and Moore died on August 10th. She was 46. Willis was diagnosed with breast cancer in May of this year. Veronica Taylor Lillis, Pokemon co-star, uh, the voice who did the lead character, Ash Ketchum, posted on a statement on X on Monday of her death. Billionaire Richard Lugner has died at age 91, only two months after he married his sixth wife, Simone Raylander. The Austrian entrepreneur died at his villa in Vienna on Monday, according to Asia France Press on August 12th. Tributes have been paid to the fiance of an X-Factor star who died after falling out of a hotel window. Ali Marmon, 33, who died on Monday, was engaged to James Jamie Hensley, who was one of the stars of the 2012 series as part of the boy band Union J. And that concludes all of the news, resignations, and uh, deaths for this week. Okay, so this is me speaking to you from the heart as always. Um, I'm going to do this as kindly and as gently as I can, but there are things that need to be said. And this is my only opportunity to do so. We've said this before in the past, and we'll say it one more time. This is primarily a channel for intermediate to advanced students and subscribers as it relates to the wealth transfer. We're still getting a lot of the same questions over and over and over again. We understand there are new viewers, and that's fine. If you're at a rudimentary level, you don't know when the SAR is, or you don't know what the reset means. If one of our subscribers chooses to tell you that cursory information, that's great. We support that. What we recommend is that you go back and start learning the basic building blocks of the wealth transfer, all the eight levels that are involved. Get a cursory understanding. Then come back to our channel once you have that down so that you can kind of follow where we're going because we don't have much time left, folks, and the pace of things that are going precipitously based on the information I'm sharing every week, based on the podcast you're seeing, this thing is speeding up quicker and quicker. That should be obvious. Therefore, we can't slow down and retract back. We have to keep moving forward. And so, unfortunately, that means some people are going to have to go back and learn some things because everybody comes in at, at this movement at a different time. But please don't ask those same questions over and over again. Please don't ask us about dates and rates. You've been, for the most part, really good about doing that, but we just need that to continue. And please don't ask us about consulting. We don't do any of that. We never ask you for any money. We never ask you for any donations. We have, by the grace of God, some great sponsors and Miles Franklin, one of, a, one of the company's currency dealers, as well as Perium, that have been gracious enough to support us so that we can pay the bills and keep this channel going. Because as you know, Bills don't pay themselves, but you'll notice we never ask you for anything. All we ask is that you like, subscribe, and share, and get this message out to new people. Help out your fellow brother or sister. If you know more than they do, bring them up to speed as quickly as you can, since you're the one that brought them in. I'm sure some of you are already doing that. I'm not speaking to the people who are doing the work and are proficient, obviously. I'm speaking to the ones who are not. We're still getting whining and complaining and groaning about a victimization, which tells us that you have not changed your mindset. Please don't push back in the comments. We don't need it. We don't want or need the negativity. It's not productive for us, for you, or for the respective subscribers who take the time out of their day to get the information. They don't come here to hear negativity. The opposite and inverse is true. They come to escape it and get the truth and a peace and calm. And that's what we're going to provide. So if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. We don't need you here. So the late, great Benny Wilson, who I had a chance to know, some of you who have been in the community a while know who I'm referring to, he would have said this message a lot more strongly than I am. Trust and believe. Those of you who know are nodding your head vociferously. But he said two key things that I always remembered. He said that 20% of the people in this will exchange. Because some of you, unfortunately, are going to take the con hit from other people telling you you don't need the banks. You can go to a, a hotel. You can get a, a, a group rate and all this other nonsense mumbo jumbo. Some of you are going to get taken, unfortunately. We've warned you. If you choose not to listen, that's on you. There is a certain amount of responsibility that is required in governing this. We're not going to exchange for you. We're not going to govern your business affairs. And we're not going to spoon feed you. This is a self-sufficient, 
channel for people who pull themselves up by their bootstraps and want to invest skin in the game. If you haven't invested anything in this, you won't understand. You have to have some skin in the game, just like anything else in life. This is no different. But he always said, because of that, only a certain amount will exchange and some will treat it like a lottery and be broke in two to three years. There's testimonies replete with that throughout the ages. Most of you should know. Finally, there's three key things that he said. It may sound rudimentary, but as you can see in some of the comments, some people are choosing not to grasp it. You need to listen, you need to pay attention and follow directions. If you're not willing or able to do those things, you won't be successful in this or anything else in life. And that is why people struggle because they don't grasp the basics. And I'm not being condescending, I'm being sincere. I'm telling you from the heart because I can't come in your living room physically. If I would, I would tell you, but folks, we cannot afford to mess around and game the system or hack things. Just get the basics and do it the right way. The ones who are not doing the work, the ones who are making excuses, that's what you're going to reap because that's what you've put out. So there are people to help you, but you have to ask for the help. There's plenty of, of channels where if you need the basics, um, for example, Nasara, we've had Dr. Scott Young, a good man, very knowledgeable about that subject. If you need a cursory overview and a little bit of a a push to get to the next level, he can help you with that. There's other people in this community. We're just, we're just one of many, but we, we cannot slow down. We will not do the work for you. You must govern and be responsible. This is your money from God. You have to answer to him, not to anybody else. Your family legacy is on the line. Your personal legacy is on the line. What more motivation could you possibly need? So I think that pretty much is self-explanatory at this point. That's it for now, folks. If we have any breaking news, as always, we'll come on and do a short for you. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend and all that you're doing. Continue to be prepared. Continue to, to take notes. Be diligent. Notes to the grindstone, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on uh, the podcast for next week's shows. Thank you so much and God bless.